Hi, my name is Wouter Henry and I'm the founder of AirShaper. In this video, we will be discussing the basic principles of computational fluid dynamics, or CFD in short. Now that's just three words, should be a short video, right? Let's start with computational. This means that in contrast to real flows, CFD flows are calculated using computers. For very small problems, you might be able to do a first simulation on your laptop, but for most bigger industrial cases, clusters with up to thousands of cores and terabytes of memory are often used, especially in aviation and automotive. Secondly, it involves a fluid, which can be either a gas or a liquid. An example of a gas could be air, and then it's called aerodynamics. An example of a liquid would be water, and then it's called hydrodynamics. Last but not least, it involves dynamics, which refers to the fact that the fluid is in motion, which can be caused by an object moving through the fluid, or because of a thermal effect driving the flow, or whatsoever. So how exactly does one compute a flow? There's three main steps to the process. Modeling, discretization and iteration. Modeling involves the continuous mathematical functions that you use to describe the real flow. In reality, that flow is the consequence of different laws of physics working together, all having their impact on the flow. To limit computational effort, it's a matter of selecting only the ones that have a substantial impact on the flow that you're looking at. For example, if you're calculating the aerodynamic lift on a wing profile, it has little use to take into account the gravitational pull of the moon, for example. So to limit the modeling errors, it's important to select correct and only relevant physical models. The most important model for fluid dynamics is a set of partial differential equations called the Navier-Stokes equations. These basically describe and apply the laws of Newton to every small bit of fluid within the flow field, stating the dynamic balance between the forces acting on this small bit and the change in its momentum. This conservation of momentum, together with the conservation of mass, allows you to describe a flow field. Now for very simple problems, like laminar flow through a cylindrical pipe, there are analytical solutions. The entire flow field can be described using continuous mathematical functions. These allow you to calculate the pressure and the velocity at any given point within the flow field, at an infinite resolution. But for anything more complex than these very simple cases, we don't have the analytical solution. This means that we need to break down reality into small blocks for which we do have a solution. Depending on the method, this can be a finite element or a finite volume method, with each finite volume called a cell. Think of it as the difference between analog and digital photography, where a hugely complex visual image is described using many simple pixels, each having just one color. This process of breaking down a large continuous flow field into small cells is called meshing. For each of these cells, we can approximate the continuous Navier-Stokes equations with discrete algebraic ones. These allow us to calculate the pressure and the velocity at the center of each cell, also called a node, based on the pressure and velocity values of the surrounding nodes. The higher the order of these discrete approximations, the more surrounding nodes are included. This reach of a single node is called a computational molecule, resulting in a set of algebraic equations for each node. As the value of one node depends on the value of the surrounding nodes and vice versa, these equations are connected. And to solve them, you need to put them all together into one big matrix. Now before we discuss how to solve this matrix, a small note on the discretization error, which is described as the difference between the exact solution of the governing equations remember the modeling, and the exact solution of the discrete approximation. The smaller your cells, the smaller this error, but also the larger the number of equations you need to solve. And with meshes typically running into the millions, this quickly becomes very expensive. So you're better off to apply large and simple cells further away from the object, where the flow is typically very relaxed and not so curvy, and very small cells close to the object where the flow is typically very complex. Once you have defined your mesh and your matrix with all the equations, it's time to solve them. You can obtain the exact solution through a direct method like Gauss elimination or LU decomposition. 
But this is very costly in terms of computational power. And why bother to solve the equations down to computer accuracy level when the discretization error is much larger anyway? This is where the faster iterative methods come in. They start by guessing an initial solution, which could even be a standstill or zero velocity flow field. Then they linearize the equations and start to improve the solution by iteration. The longer you iterate, the more you converge to a stable flow field and the more you reduce the iteration error. The difference between this solution and the direct solution of the equations is called the iteration error. So, to summarize, to obtain an accurate computational fluid dynamics result, there are three errors you need to keep under control. The first is the modeling error, which is the difference between the real physics and the models that you use to describe those. The second one is the discretization error, introduced by chopping up reality and then approximating the continuous equations with discrete ones. And thirdly, there's the iteration error, which is the difference between the exact solution of the equations and the one you obtain via iteration. So that was it for this video on fluid dynamics. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button and I'm looking forward to see your comments below. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.